everybody, my name is Shanta Aguilar and I am from Eva Beach, Hawaii. Hi, I'm Alexander Cormadel and I'm from Fountain Hills, Arizona. And I'm Madeline Stewart and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Sonna de Schipper and I'm from the Netherlands. My name is Jenny and in Chen Li, I'm from Taiwan. My name is Nathan and I'm from Gilbert, Arizona. And we worked with a company called Umco from Quito, Ecuador, and it's one of the largest fast-moving consumer goods companies in Ecuador. All right. Well, welcome back. It, uh, it's good Thank to see you. your, your you. smiling faces, <laughs> and, and certainly to, to have this report out and, and hear about your experience there. So, Nathan, you mentioned that you worked for Umco, which yep. is a, a cookware company and certainly one of the largest and, and most established in that fast moving consumer goods space. Tell us a little bit about the, the history of, of UMCO as we get yeah. some context for the audience as, as we dig into your project here a bit further. So the company is based out of Quito, Ecuador. It's, the, it's been there for about 70 years. Um, it's, it, it has a really large market share in, when, it's, when you talk about pots and pans. Um, it has it's very engineer. It has a very large engineering presence, and it's it's very focused on um, making a, a, a large number of different types of products. And their their um, their motto, I guess, is ideas for the home. So basically, everything that comes in that category, they they make. Okay, fantastic. And then Jenny, let's mm -hmm. let's focus in a little bit more on your actual project. So what were you there to do for your client? What so, was the, yeah. the, the objective of the project? Yeah, so they have like a new product line, which is they're focusing on more high-end customers in Ecuador. And then it's different from their, what they have right now. It's like the Umco brand is more like a middle or low-end products. So they're trying to um, launch a new product line in Keto. And then they're finding a way and then a marketing way to yeah, to launch the product line. Okay, so, and your team was brought in to help them really identify what is the market for that and yeah. then to make some product recommendations and just mm -hmm. make sure that there's a good quality fit and yes. really to help design mm -hmm. what that go-to market strategy looks like mm -hmm. for this, this new product line. Yeah. Sounds exciting. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Right? Of yeah, good. Let's, let's talk about that process a little bit. So take us into the, the first days of your project and, and then maybe through that, that first week. What did your initial process look like as you jumped into this project? So the first couple days we kind of needed to further define our scope and kind of see what, what exactly it is they wanted. And once we had that done, we need to kind of take an overall approach to it so we need to figure out how big our, the market was and we went on online to study like the government the government data and being able to really size up the market that for what Jenny was mentioning for this high-end product of uh, pots and pans to see kind of what the playing field was. Okay. So they really wanted to make sure that we knew about their product and appreciated it in the same way that they did as engineers. So they took us in the first few days through the factory. They tested us on the differences between aluminum, Teflon, stainless steel. All right, hold on. That, that's too good. So <laughs> for, the, for the audience out there, what is the difference between aluminum, stainless oh, steel? Goodness. <laughs> so aluminum is for your lower end products and the government in Ecuador is currently focused on um, stopping, currently focused on moving people to using more stainless steel products because aluminum after a certain period of time of cooking in these large pots as they do in Ecuador in small corner shops, um, the aluminum starts to go into your food. So stainless steel is a healthier alternative to aluminum and it lasts longer than products using Teflon, and Teflon can scratch off, etc. So, as does anyone else have anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah, by the end of it, we, we were able to tell what's what just by looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had an eye for it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is great. So you, you have the client, and they certainly, being product engineers, they want to know that those who are consulting with them have an appreciation for what the product side right. looks like. You get a chance to, to really tour the factory, get a sense for what that looks like. Before we go any further, what were your impressions of, of what the manufacturing process for these products entails? 
It was, I was very surprised. It was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Like they, what they, they basically get a disc. Mm -hmm. So the discs aren't fabricated in at the Yumco fa factory, but they get a disc imported. And the disc has, depending on the product, it could be like a, just the layer of aluminum or yeah. it could be aluminum with a layer of steel or in our case it would be a steel, aluminum, steel. So once they have these discs, they have these, this big machinery that they put the disc in and it would mold the, the different size discs into the product that it's supposed to be in. It was, it was it really is, cool yeah, to watch. Like you can't really explain seconds, it very well. You can get a new product. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. the mold yeah. would go in, push through the disc, and you'd hear it and make its machine sound. So I'd yeah. push it through, <laughs> and then they'd pull it out, and that would pop, uh, would pop a, yeah. a pot or a pan. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. With that, that newfound appreciation for what the manufacturing side of this work entails, then you start to get a sense for, okay, here's the, the real objective of the work. What did you do next? So you mentioned that you did some, some third-party data gathering, yeah. and then you certainly did some some other work. Talk to us about the the methods that were employed initially in your discovery efforts. I think besides our online research, we also did a survey where we send out questions about the how people use their pots and pans and what their preferences are. Um, to we in the end we got a hundred respondents. Um, and that was we could get a better idea of who our target market was and a little bit more about their lifestyle uh, and their preferences while cooking. And I think that was a really big source of information for us. Yeah. Okay. In that process. What else did you did you do? We went out into the streets and talked to um, locals. So at the department stores, at the retail stores, at restaurant distributors, um, even chefs at restaurants, we went in and talked to them because we really want to get their feedback mm -hmm. on the prototype of the new product line and just really talk to locals and see what, like who they are so that we could get a better idea of who we are trying to serve. Okay, good. What, what were some of the, as you're starting to think about taking this discovery and you've got all of this information, what were some of the key things that helped you to make sense of that information going into your, your midpoint? So how did you go from every, this huge, and a pot of, of complexity, and then start to refine your efforts a little bit. We used mm. sticky notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, kind of yeah. a, good, it was yeah. a good method to yeah. like put all of our ideas from all of our different sources, all of our mm -hmm. insights, put them all out, and then figure out which ones were the most um, which ones were the most useful in our project. So we'd go through all of them pick out the ones we'd like. We um, sauna dug through the survey data mm -hmm. and we pulled out insights by combining like different questions using the data from one question to answer different questions and we would pull out the insights that we thought were applicable to this project. Yeah and we each got different things from different meetings. We each we divided and conquered and so we each had our own snippet of information in order to combine that we yeah. Took all the paintings off the walls, and mm -hmm. everyone put all <laughs> Our their information. Our house was covered in paintings. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and no, it was a great way to truly like visualize the information yeah. and to do, decide what to do next. So, in in essence, what were the key themes that you were focused on? What were you ultimately intending to deliver to the the client? What were your your core objectives in the project? Yeah. So, so there's three scopes of our pro project. One is um, the combination of sets, which is deciding like what is in the sets of the product, and then and then also the price. So the sets meaning uh, five piece. Yeah, seven five piece, piece or... seven piece, and then the second one is the distribution um, channels, which is we need to decide where to sell our new product line, and then the last one is the promotion, which including like um, packaging, brand name, and then everything you can think of like in the promotion part. Okay. All right, so let's let's dig into that work a little bit further, and we'll take those in in order. The first one okay. was this the sense of combinations mm -hmm. and then pricing associated with those combinations. Walk the audience through how you were able to derive really rigorous and 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 objectively defensible combinations and then price points. How did you do that? I think we started with our survey where we asked people to rank which which cookware they most often use um, and from that we got a ranking and we saw that people most often use small pots 
and a big pan. Um, and then the new product line also included a wok, which is now very commonly used in Ecuador. Um, so that was also in our survey and that got ranked fourth. So then we decided to test that on the streets and ask yeah. people also what they thought of those combinations. Okay. And we also went to department stores with both the client and ourselves to record the prices of every single item that fit into um, the pots and pans we were given from Umco for the new product line. So, so you created a, a competitive landscape and now Yes, yep. so we had a giant Excel document with every single dimension of every pan and mm -hmm. looked at all of those and then took out the ones that weren't necessarily needed, that did not meet the same diameter, et cetera, of our pots and pans, and then we looked at those prices. Okay. Yeah. Right, and we took this competitor analysis and we looked at the packaging as well to figure out how to differentiate uh, this new product line from uh, uh, Umco's uh, previous line and the other competitors. And we also use interviews to gather insights onto what was working better for our target market to see whether or not uh, we should be going with one direction or another. Okay. And then from there, you so you derive some ideal combinations yeah. and then some price points yeah. and then you would have you would have tested willingness to pay through the survey yes. instrument yep. as, as mm -hmm. well let's talk a little bit now about the the promotional piece mm -hmm. so it, this is always interesting work because it's it's very rare that people in the marketing department won't have their own ideas and opinions of, of what things ought to be like and and look like what do you think really helped you to create a, a compelling case for ultimately what you delivered? And we'll, we'll talk about the deliverables later, but just thinking about the process right now, what do you think really helped you in that, in that effort to, to create a compelling case here? I think it was the survey data and going to, out in the field and doing interviews with, uh, with our target consumers. Um, before the, their marketing department seemed to do everything internally and it was almost a little closed off from the rest of the world. What we did was we expanded out and we gathered uh, real insights and tested our assumptions and their assumptions and really got a good feel of what it should have been like. The survey also really helped us as well because we asked questions about their personalities, their lifestyle, so we can get a bit better understanding of who they were and kind of depict that in the packaging and the brand positioning and all of that. Um, I found the promotional piece a bit more difficult than the others because when we asked the marketing team what differentiated the Umco brand from the new product line or new brand, much of the characteristics they use um, describe both of them and so at our first job was distinguishing the two brands and seeing what made Umco different and what made the new brand different so just distinguishing those two and then internally so distinguishing internally, them yeah. from one another yeah. so they yeah. don't bleed into each other yeah again. yeah okay and then and then from that the surveys and talking to the people and um, getting like just understanding who they were so that we could depict that into the packaging and the positioning and all of that. And at the end of our survey, we actually found that the people who were serving our target market were more um, freestyle, healthy, mm -hmm. and traditional cooks, who or health conscious cooks. And so we took all of those traits and uh, used that in our positioning and even depicted some of that in our, our packaging, which Alex designed. Yeah. 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 It really helped us to create uh, personas that helped to tell the story back to the client to add, uh, to describe who these people were, their target market, mm -hmm. and then they could uh, take that into the future and remember who they're designing for. Yeah, because yeah. initially they just thought that they were they were, were going to serve a higher end or a higher clientele, but with our surveys and all that, we dug even deeper and we molded and molded actual personas. Like, where do these people live? How much income are they yeah. making? Um, how busy are they throughout the week? What kind of cooks they are? And so we we honed in even further. And then you you mentioned that at first it wasn't self-evident. It wasn't quite obvious what these points of differentiation were. How did how were you able to to push through that complexity and get to some really intriguing points of differentiation for the for your client? 
so we mapped um, with the tool from Professor Hans Secker, we uh, mapped our competition mm -hmm. to see where some gaps are in terms of service or price or quality. We all mapped that out and then we saw that there was a really big gap with the service of the competitors we had. Mm -hmm. So we saw that there was a real big opportunity for Unco there, also because they're local, um, to give some additional service to the, to the clients. And we studied their um, other competitors warranties or guarantees or their service categories to see what they did and the majority if you read between like if you read the small print they do not serve Ecuadorian community it mainly says like the US and Puerto Rico for example and so then we saw that as an opportunity to capitalize on since they are located in Ecuador and they could easily um, serve their community quickly and efficiently so we saw that as a great opportunity so now, full circle, you you have your midpoint stand up with your, your client or your midpoint engagement with the client. What did you learn from that that helped you as you push forward to your ultimate deliverables, your, your final deliverables? As we worked with our client, we realized that they might be a little hesitant at some of the ideas that we might have. Um, and so what we really focused on in the midpoint was backing our ideas um, that they were purely data driven, that yeah. it came from us talking to people in the field, us getting our surveys and showing them that these aren't just ideas that we cooked up, but they actually are backed by, by actual people who, who wanted to express how they, like what they liked about their cookware and, and so forth. Yeah, and so that, that midpoint ends up going well, you learn that information. What did you ultimately hand over to to your client what is it that you ultimately produced for this client that's a big question yeah <laughs> yeah so we this we um our format was basically we gave them options a mm -hmm. lot of different options um so for the first one for the price uh, the pricing of the sets yeah. and the set combinations um we determined which kind of sets they were so we we presented a five piece set and a seven piece set mm -hmm. and then we went into pricing for the pricing, we had different strategies, as Nathan yeah. and Jenny came out very smartly. Um, and we basically said, okay, these are your options. So we, we took them through the whole process that we took. Um, and then um, we kind of said, okay, these are, if you're willing to do this, you should go with this strategy. If you're willing to do this, you can go with this strategy. And it was mainly to do with the service options we gave them. So we gave them five customer service options. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I yeah. need to go into detail about those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. And, and, and ultimately you ended up presenting this this really comprehensive, not only deck, but I think the thing that I was most impressed with and, and, and pleased by was the level of commitment to the data-driven analysis mm -hmm. and the ability to show the client throughout the process yeah. where the information was coming from, what the why was behind that information. Right. Mm -hmm so that these weren't just abstract thoughts, as, as you mentioned, Nathan, or your own intuition. These were things that were really grounded in, yeah. in, in genuine insights. No, exactly. Yeah, and we wanted to show that we were thinking about these comprehensively and that we um, thought of the pros and cons. So we had, for every single strategy, advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And we had all the strategies interconnected. So if you were to take, as Sana said, this path, you should do this and this and this. So we wanted to show them that we were thinking of, because they were worried a lot about the cost of the new mm -hmm. product, and we wanted to show them that we were also thinking of that as well. And we wanted to take their thoughts into consideration. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like fascinating work. What, mm -hmm. what were your impressions as you got to stand and, and deliver to the general manager, deliver to the marketing director, deliver to, to somebody else in the, in the marketing team as, as you were going through that process and, and just having that experience? What were some of your impressions and what do you think your clients' impressions were at, at the point of, of that final deliverable? I think they're very interested in our findings. I don't because they're they seem to be really spread thin on the marketing side that they hadn't really taken the time to get to go out and get these insights for other products. And so I think they're interested in the way that we went about it and also the insights that we had. I saw a few of them kind of like open their eyes like, "Oh, wow, like they found that." Like they were pretty surprised that their assumption like they that they could approve their own assumption or prove that it should go kind of a different way. Um, and I think they're very interested. They've been wanting to establish this brand, so they, they
they had never really done something like this before. And so seeing kind of how we would map it out and how we suggested that they do it, I felt it was really helpful to them. Yeah. I think our recommendations were well received. Um, I looked over and I saw a junior marketing associate turn over to the general manager yeah. and was like, yes, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. This is how we should do it. And I think they really liked the um, suggestions that we gave them and I hope that they look into it further and even implement that in the future. Yeah, one of the best parts was during the, <clears throat> during our last meeting, they, uh, UNCO uh, uh, employees started discussing and started brainstorming based off of the ideas that we'd given them. Yeah. That was super cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's always neat when you see them actually teasing yeah. out the ideas mm -hmm. yeah. in, in real yeah. time right in, in right. front of you. Mm -hmm. So, well, fantastic. Let's, um, you know, what a, what a neat experience over the course of less than, than three weeks to have six of you be able to, to come together and essentially design the, the core elements to this, to this new product launch. With that in mind, and, and also anything else that, that might be terribly interesting to, to you all as professionals, what did you take away from this? What was, what was the value to this experience for you, and, and ultimately, what do you hope that you contributed along the way as well? Me? Okay. Um, <laughs> this really prepared me for my internship, which I will begin on Monday, so just two days from now because the company I'm going to be working for is creating a new brand underneath the parent company and so I'll be serving both the parent company and the subsidiary on the mar on the marketing side for both. So this new creating this new brand really just prepared me for what I'm going to be doing again, again on Monday. And what I hope I left behind was a good impression um, a good thunderbird impression for Umco and of all and all of Ecuador, which I think we did really well. So, yeah. yeah. And, and and I have heard from the client, and that was that was certainly the case. So, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest things that I learned was uh, being able to go out and get this raw data and synthesize it and create insight, powerful insights from uh, this what we've learned, and that. That was so cool to see, and like it really helps to to help you create these confident decisions and present them to your client, and have no doubt that you thought about everything. It was it was great. Yeah, and I thought was really neat was most of the time you get to work on a product or a decision or a brand or something that's already been created, and this one was kind of creating something from scratch which was really incredible to see and go through every single entire like process from beginning to end and working with a team because usually you work in a certain department etc and working with a team with such varied interest and a diverse set of skills was incredible to see and to look at all of the different perspectives that come into creating this. Yeah, I think what I learned is that in school we learn a lot of theory and a lot and a lot of helpful theory too, but in reality it doesn't always fit within those theories. So I think that the the most that I learned is that sometimes you need to step out and just take mm -hmm. from the theory what you can use and leave the rest as is. Um, I mean, a lot of us are really helpful, but some things we were struggling with because it didn't fit the theory and we wanted it to fit. So I think you need to let go of that sometimes in like real life situations. And then in terms of what we left behind, I hope that we inspire them a little to, mm -hmm. to show them that there are also different ways of doing business mm -hmm. yeah and then yeah yeah so what i learned is i agree with sana is that we we can actually apply what we learn in thunderbird into like our our like into a real case with a local company in ecuador and it's and then also like working with people like with like diverse background like different culture culture or like different we have different skills what that we learned in undergrad and what we learned in Thunderbird, how we can combine those abilities into a case, into a real marketing project. So that is really cool. And then I hope that we can, like what I left behind is that I hope that we can actually help them to move forward to what they want in the future. Yeah. Um, for me, I come with like a, a consulting background where the scopes are more rigid where it's more of like a, it, was, it seemed like it was more of like a checklist of things that we had to do and like if we take 
um, the ideas to the client. It was very, like if we were wanting to change it, it was kind of hard to change the scope just because of the bureaucratic atmosphere behind it. Um, but this, this project was cool because the scope was very create, like it was based on creativity basically. Like we go out, we take our insights and we use our kind of creative mindset and to, to go in and take these insights and to fill in the scope that we were given. Um, as far as things that I hope that we left behind, I hope we kind of left a map a little bit for them for when they venture out and do add upon this in the future. Um, that they can see kind of the steps that we took in, in fulfilling their scope of work and use it for the future. You know, just <clears throat> final word and, and building on that, the, and we talked about this yesterday, very often in consulting, it's, it's kind of who's the smartest person in the room and you don't really want to show the process necessarily because for some that can be viewed as, as hindering their opportunity for the next generation work. I think one of the things that you all did particularly well was really open up that collaborative experience with your client so that not only did they end up with recommendations, but they ended up with a pathway. Not only a pathway forward in terms of how to implement things, but a pathway or a trail that showed how you actually derive these, these insights along the way. And that's not only incredibly valuable to a client, but it's, it's also very gracious um, of you as, as consultants. And so I, I think not only did they really appreciate the recommendations, they really appreciated being able to follow that trail and see how things actually came, came about. And, and I think you appreciated having to, to go through that process as well. So, well, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you for, for representing Thunderbird very well. Thank you for representing yourselves very well. And I'm sure you'll be following UNCO for, for the next foreseeable we future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing when that new site launches and, and yeah. being able to point to certain elements of that and say, that's, that's really neat that we were able to have a hand in, in influencing what this thing can look like going forward. So, yeah. fantastic job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.